all and welcome back to my channel. I am Paige and this week we are painting on this marvelous wood circle piece and we are going to be transforming it into a disco ball. <laughs> another first for us and it's another like realistic painting. We're not just doing an acrylic pour. We're painting with purpose. So if you're interested in seeing how it turns out, please continue watching. The surface we are working on today is just a wood round circle. I didn't have any round canvases and I went ahead and taped up the edges and I also put it on push pins so it's a little elevated and I have my cake turner down below just so in the long run we can rotate it if needed. It might make things easier. First what a lot of people do before beginning the whole checkered actual disco ball portion is they lay down a base coat of like a bright color and then they sketch on the general shape of the disco ball. So I have kind of a neon green color that I'm going to use as the base. We're going to let that totally dry. We just need a light coat on here, nothing too fancy. And once it's dry, then I will use a pencil to kind of sketch out the design of our disco ball. The next thing that people seem to do is take this plain neon background and kind of add some like soft tones to it to add a bit of dimension. I think it'll kind of end up being some of the background to which the disco ball will be like reflecting at us. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> I, I think I'm just winging this. <laughs> So I'm going to do some like soft uh, purples, pinks, maybe some like blues in there and a bit of white to kind of soften it all up. Our base is done. I think this looks pretty cool. Um, you could kind of see the outline from the lines that I drew previously, but I went ahead and redrew them. It's now time to lay down our tiles. And I think I'm gonna kind of stick with similar colors to what's beneath them, doing various shades of kind of yellow and pink and maybe orange to blue and purple. I'm just gonna kind of place down what I'm feeling. The cool thing about this is if I don't like it, I can just wait for it to dry and then paint over top of it. The more layers you add to something like a disco ball, the more it just adds to the dimension. I have several kind of medium sized brushes. I think I like this one that has a nice flat edge so I can easily just kind of paint down tiles. And then I have skinnier ones for later when I do like the actual striping of the disco ball and spaces in between the tiles. Our disco ball is all finished. I glossed it maybe like 
three times, three or four times thin coats. I just wanted it to really shine. And I debated putting glitter all over the canvas like we did with this painting back here. However, I had already created little kind of like shine spots. So I dumped some glitter concentrated in those spots. And here is our finished piece. See, it's, oh, it shines really nicely, even though it, it's not covered in resin. But we've got little globs of glitter. I just kind of went with it. <laughs> I really, I mean, I made a couple adjustments and I painted over these over and over, just kind of adding more and more dimension. And I don't know if it made a difference, but I really love the kind of fading from the orange yellow to pinking purple to green kind of blue. I, I think this is the first of many disco balls because this was so fun to make. Here are some up close shots of this piece out in the natural light. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's craft. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I tend to post videos on Fridays. I also put a list of all the materials I used in each week's craft down in the description box below. I'll see you guys all for the next one.